Blessed love, my family. Give thanks for your presence. At this moment, we are on a mission seeking for real partners. We are establishing a real partnership in this what we consider a real war. Let me be clear from the onset, we will be speaking of finance. This is not a word to everyone. This is primarily for those who appreciate the works that we do. Those who love the mission that we are on. Not appreciate hate, which means to magnify the hate, but appreciate love. Magnify the love. As most of you would know, one of our videos on YouTube was taken down a few weeks ago. That left us with a strike against our channel and a handful of restrictions for us to go over. Many people have literally told us in the past that you should monetize your channel. Now to be very clear, I have no intention, neither did I have any passion whatsoever to do that. But even if I did, that is something that was never possible and is not possible now because of the restrictions, number one, that cannot be done. And then again, even without the restrictions, it was already restricted in the region that I am in, where I live. So Radio Anu was also taken down a few days after. And within a few days, it also came back up. As you also know, unlike many other channels, we do not make it a habit or even a part of our business at all to ask for any donations or contributions. This also is for several reasons. Number one, as we have expressed in the past, we honestly don't think that we should ask for such from an audience that can see the work that we are doing. Number two, even in the past, after being encouraged by others to solicit donations and con contributions, we established the PayPal system. Those of you who have attempted to contribute via that PayPal know for sure that it never worked. There was always an issue. Email and Facebook shut down several times, plus other things behind the scenes that I would not even mention here. No Patreon and being ostracized from the executive YouTube club, I am sincerely asking you, those of you who admire and appreciate the work that we do to assist us in this venture of uplifting our people, physical soul and mind. I am not asking you to contribute and I am not asking you for any donation. I am just asking you to patronize. You know we have begun to create a series of ebooks from Anu Ancient and Modern Revisited to the ebook The True Biblical Land of Israel. Of course, our children books like The Great Kings and Queens of Africa. You know we have our video lecture series. We also have our DVD documentaries from the Master of Ceremony 7 and the Night of the Black Tiger. You also know as it relates to Radio Anu, there's a monthly subscription where you literally get the programs that are done nightly on the shock of the hour. Of course, on one level, you will be assisting myself as I am also assisting you. It is just a genuine and justified exchange of goods and services. Now there's much, much more behind the scenes that I care not to say on this medium. Now I have no criminal record. Well known and accepted in my community, 
but it seems like there's something coming out of my mouth that is a bother to some and I'm not cursing and there's no guile coming from between my teeth just what I consider to be the truth my brothers and sisters who love me and love the work as I love you as well I'm being very straight we're on the battlefield so I'm asking you to partner with me to assist me on the battlefield we're not asking for anything as contributions and donations we are asking you to patronize what we have to offer give thanks obviously there would be a reason why we ask so you could email me at treatisaac27 at gmail.com and I'll give you more information I am looking forward to hear from you. Salam ta. The next month, which is June the 21st, you see the sun right the equinox, the sun rose right in the center of the constellation known as Pisces. Let me show you what I'm speaking of. Let us just say in the year 1590, the year after, okay, the 21st day of March, we see the sun basically at the same spot. Let's check the year 1520, still there. 1521, still there. 1522, still there. 1523, still there. 1524, still there. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, still there. So in other words, in, all, in, in, a, in about 15 years, when we return on the 21st day of March, as we do every year, we notice that the sun is still in the same spot. Now the sun is not in the same spot. It appears as if it's in the same spot, but the sun is moving one degree every 72 years. So that means the sun in its movement of its governing power, as far as the age goes is moving one degree every 72 years i want you to keep this in mind remember you the sun is moving from one constellation to the other constellation one per month this is what we observe so let's watch this let me show you for example 21st day of february 22nd 23rd 24th 25th you see the sun moving 26 27 28 29 30, 31, 1st of April, 2nd of April, 3rd of April, 4th of April, 5th of April, 6th of April, 7th of April. You see, that's how the sun moves. So every day, you see the sun traversing through the heavens, moving through the constellations, just like this. You notice Mercury and the moon passing the sun as the days go by, because this is showing your record. So I'm going backwards as such now. You know, in the night, the 6th, the 3rd, back to the 21st day of March. Now that's on the daily level. But as it relates to the age now, let me show you. So as I said, listen good. We are basically, obviously, in the year 1518. Now we are And we definitely do give thanks for your very presence with us. Wonderful day. Give thanks. You know the shock of the hour with you. This is the Mystic Vibration. Of course, it's Radio Anu. The international flavor, definitely the universal spice. And Honorable Priest Isaac here. And of course, it is always a treat when good people meet. So we are here together. And we're going to elevate, you know, to the different levels and different heights. Once again, the mystic vibration. This is specifically for the 17th day of July, 2018. And you know, there's so many things <laughs> that are really going on. But um, yeah, let us just go through with our vibes and keep it up full. And let me just say again, just reminding you that the the ebook, specifically our first in the line of children ebook 
is out with talking about the, the uh, great African kings and queens. And we have definitely decided to put that in ebook fashion, myself and the youth specifically, and uh, bringing it forward for, for, for children really. And that's really what it is. Haven't given it a specific age range. Why? Because I'm sure there's some big old people that could read that book and really be inspired as well, as simple as it is. So as even the child is beginning to read, it's just a simple book with a few dates and um, giving you an understanding of who these kings and queens are. We highlight 13 kings and queens within the book. Very simple, um, simple expression, colorful pages, just to inspire the child, of course, to definitely know more about themselves and connect more with their African heritage. So those of us who speak about the curriculum and uh, the education system and all of these different things. So we decided to, you know, change the gear as such, you know, and uh, as I said on a, a video we did not too long ago, we have a lot of information, a catalog as such on the YouTube, which it seems like it belongs to them because as they said, I mean, any moment if I, you know, say the wrong thing, I could just lose all of that forever, you know, well, give thanks that I have it as well, but um, so, if I didn't have it, it would be there, as I would assume, totally. But I'm just showing you that uh, the full vibes is that since we talk about education, a lot of that information that I have, you know, all honesty, you know, you could say that many times when we speak, we're, we're speaking as if we're speaking to an adult audience. In fact, sometimes we're speaking as if we're speaking to people that know everything we're speaking about already. And obviously, that will be a grave mistake. So I'm just saying now, the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards teach us to put the food, you know, where the children can reach it. So, if, before we put the, the food where the children can reach it, we got to literally reach the children first. And, you know, we have to consider that we're preparing something for the children, you know. Uh, you know, as they say, calf, calves drink milk, you know, you know, and, um, and, and babies too. I mean, our, our kind of babies, milk and... And when you're a child, before you even have, 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 have teeth in your mouth, they give you some mushy food, you know, because even, not even the teeth alone, but your whole structure and system is, is, is more, at that time, up to the milk and many other different things on a more lighter nature. So we can't totally forget the children, you know, and, and be speaking to the adults and speaking to the people that know already, who, who just waiting for you to finish speak so they can tell you what they think and all of them kind of things there. No, we got to definitely get the young bones. So I'm just showing you, I mean, I have some young bones and I, I'm doing, you know, what I know I got to do to make sure them young bones get strong in their African bones, you know. And I know for sure that there are many of you out there who have your young ones and you definitely would like, you know, your young ones to, to, to elevate to a different level and to keep strong in this. You don't want them to go astray then. Let's just leave it at that. You don't want them to go astray. You know, maybe you have some bigger ones that have already gone astray before you are as conscious as you are now. I mean, life is stages, you know. Everything is blessed, man. No worry. You're well taken care of by the living al almighty eye. So within your own self, once you are genuine and once you are honest, you know that, hey, look, I have some youths here. You know, I'm trying to homeschool them or I'm sending them to the public school or whatever it is I'm doing. But I really like them to stay in order and like them to stay, in, you know, in line. So you need to get your surroundings, you know, adapted to what you want them to definitely become a part of them. From a child, you have to get certain things in the vocab from a child. All them heroes and sheroes they're talking about, they're supposed to know them from a child. They're supposed to know their voice. When they hear Marcus speak, they know it's him. When they hear whoever else they love speak, they know it's him. You know, certain books, they, even if they never read it, they're supposed to be able to identify it. Let them know the scholars, know them, and, 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 and um, sit and watch the videos with you that you love to watch, you know. That's why I got to make it clean. And, and, and when you're reading, put them on your lap and read to them and let them understand this is exactly what it is, you know. Keep it up, you know what I'm saying. So for those especially that are already pressing the buttons on the, on the computer there, I just make me laugh because just today, 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 
um, you know, just going to some work that we are also doing otherwise, me and um, the young ones, and I just asked the young princess to type something. I'm telling you, I, I, I don't think, I just blinked, you know, and she's asked me, this is how you spell it? I mean, I mean, it was so fast. I was like, what? What do you mean? You done that? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm telling you the truth, you know. So even at a young age, and, and some of them, they're very, you know, they have applied themselves to the technology of the world, you know, and the, the, the cell phones and the, what you call the stuff, the tablets and the, the laptops. And if they don't have one of their own, they, they use yours from time to time, you know. So as I'm saying now, we have already available the first in the ebooks and we're going to be coming with these ebooks too you know specifically for the children and i know many of you like the watch your pocket and they're very inexpensive you contact us and we'll tell you but extremely in extremely inexpensive and there there are many offers that we give where you know you'll be still blessed with one depending on the offer that you take you know so um very inexpensive brother all right take it from me down there you know so specifically as i'm saying it also assists in the the child reading There's no great information that you know busts your brains it's just simple you know um queen and zinga we highlight king akhenaten tutankhamun we'll be coming with books dealing with the african leaders you know um coming with books that would even fit within a conscious curriculum even dealing with science on a simple level but that's what the child wants as i said they're already in the tablet so instead of them playing whatever video game all day long and all of this stuff they have their ebooks that they can go through and the beauty of the ebook now that they could literally press a link and go to a video which we have already set up in the site that the video is set up in and they could get more directly information as it relates to what they read in, in the ebook you know so definitely it is there for you can inquire more about it as i said and it is there for your purchase as well and of course it is for the youth and you yourself can sit with them in the evening and read your little ebook to them and send them off to rest this is how serious the thing is. So ain't too much talking. Doing is very important. I hear people talk. Yeah, well, we got to do this. and got to come together. You know, and this, we got to do this. and got to do that. Well, do it, no man. Let's do it. Stop talking. Do it. Everybody do something and we good. We <laughs> manualize the last year. Rastafari. Give thanks, you know. So give thanks to the Royal Princess Akesha Menin, who is really the author of that book, you know. I must say, and um, key researcher in that in that field, and the Honorable Prince Almasi, chief coordinator when it comes to designing and all of these different things, you know. So thanks to the Precise Institute of Holistic Knowledge. You know, this evening I want to speak about Thomas, Thomas Didymus, Judas. How much people are? Thomas. Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas. You ever hear about the Gospel of Thomas? Okay. But I want to talk about Thomas though. We all know about Thomas, don't we? Thomas in the Bible. Now, Thomas is not mentioned too much in the Bible, you know. You don't see him in many, many chapters and verses. You know, there's not even a book of Thomas, no Gospel of Thomas, at least not in the regular bible that we hold from time to time but we know there's a gospel of thomas we're getting there but the man thomas now he's well known if you ask the name the disciples uh well let me see now. uh well it's easy to say matthew mark luke and john because that's easy to say but uh, i don't think luke was a disciple so you gotta be careful but then at the same time now you might be quick to say peter and uh let me see james and john and yeah okay let me see who else now uh, 
But Thomas will come up. Because <laughs> Thomas is a famous character. The doubting Thomas. His name has been utilized in a phrase that, you know, seems to stick on anybody who, who, who's conceited or who doubts, basically. Oh, you're doubting Thomas. You don't believe. You're denying like Peter, you know. So the Thomas now in the Bible, he has been given this title as the doubter. Why? Because when the Christ was resurrected, you know, he appeared unto the disciples. And all the disciples saw him. And they marveled and wow, I can't believe this is the man. And, and then he made a move. But then Thomas came walking in afterwards and saying, hey, fellas, what's going on? And, you know, the full works. Well, he didn't really say that, but, you know, adding some flavor to it. And they said, man, the Messiah was here. Thomas said, here we are. Here the man, he just left not too long ago. Y'all in the wine again, man, come on. <laughs> You expect, you really expect me to fall for that day, car? Which Messiah was with? Boss, let's listen, move, let me get this thing. He was here. And they said, when Thomas was wrestling with them, showing them, man, he don't believe this, son. Y'all need to come better than that. It is said that the Messiah himself came in afterwards and said, Thomas, it is I. And obviously, he was all shook up, like, wow. Is it really you? He said, Thomas, come and see. You know, I look at the holes in my hand. I look at the holes in my feet. I look at the hole the, the, in my side, the cut in my side. And then he said, it's going to get graphic now, eh? Poke your finger through the holes in my hand. And, and put your hand in the flesh of my side. So Thomas did all of this, you know. And then Thomas said, yes, I believe. And the Messiah showed him, well, good. I'm happy that you believe, but blessed be those that will not see, not even touch, and they will believe. You know, and that, that is an allegory that goes into many, many different levels, you know. Wow. But yeah, so basically that's the story. As I said, that can branch off into different channels, I'm telling you. So we're going to deal with a few of them today. But at least that's the groundation thereof. That's the story. That's the allegory. And there's so many different things about it. It's as if my mouth is watering just to go ahead here. But okay. Tell you what. Let us just begin <laughs> with this first of all. Um, what is the gospel of Thomas? And it says here, the gospel, and this, oh, pardon me, let me see, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, coming from gotquestions.org, and it's asking what is the gospel of Thomas, and the information is saying here, the gospel of Thomas is a Coptic manuscript discovered in 1945 at Nagahamadi Hammadi in Egypt, it's Kemen. This manuscript contains 114 sayings attributed to to Christ. Some of these sayings resemble sayings found in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Other sayings were unknown until their discovery or even run counter to what is written in the four Gospels. One December day in 1945, far up the Nile River, it's a story time here. Two Egyptian peasants were looking for a local variety of crumble um, nitrate rock used as fertilizer. See, it is. They came across a large jar about a meter tall, hidden by a boulder. Inside, they found a collection of ancient leather-bound books and codices. The spot where the books were found is where, uh, pardon me, within a few miles of the site of an early monastery established by the founder of Christian um, um, Christian Sinobiet, Sinobitic, uh, I think I have the pronunciation somewhat, Sinobitic, Sinobitic, okay, Monaster, Monasterism in Egypt, and his name is pa, Pachomenos, okay, wow, these words got me there going, yeah, that's how it is sometimes, but, um, Pachimuyas. Okay. Well, anyway, 
Um, so as far as the pronunciation, Sinobatic or Sinobitic, I don't know if I have it right, but I know for sure, at least for my studying, you know, I've obviously come across the word and it has to do more with a, a, a communal um, type of environment. It's a form of, of um, monk living, mon monk style living, monastery living that deals specifically with a community of monks as such. So even the monks in Ethiopia that live in Wildeba and these dis different places, you can consider them um, Sinobi, Sinobitic <laughs> sort of monks. Yes, uh, boy, pardon me, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so as far as that now, um, the Gospel of Thomas again. This now we're dealing with Gnostic dot, dot org. Gnostic dot org. Okay. And this one is entitled Twin of Jesus. The Gnostic Apostle Thomas. A long suppressed, long forgotten form of Christianity in which Thomas was the chief apostle has come to light in recent years. In Western Christendom, Thomas is known chiefly as the doubter, the close follower of Christ, who had to touch his master's womb in order to be convinced that he had already risen from the dead. Among some of the earliest follower, followers in the Fertile Crescent, from North Syria to Egypt, Thomas emerged much more prominently according to this. He was seen as the special confidant of Christ, recorder of his master's saying, and in some sense his twin, Churches across Asia came to regard him as their founding apostle, and in the sayings purportedly recorded by Thomas, Christ appears as an inspired sage imparting spiritual wisdom to his hearers, not only as the Christ. Hmm. So he's an inspired sage. In these pages, the lower surrounding of the apostle in his recently rediscovered role has been brought together for the first time. Lower that appears in historical records, myths, legends, cultural artifacts, and religious literature, and in modern speculations about their meaning. Much of this material has come to light at a time when many scholars, clerics, and lay people are looking beyond the traditional New Testament, the texts that church leaders picked out as, authoritative, as authoritative, some as authoritative some 17 or 18 century ago, to the mass of other early writings concerning the Messiah and his followers. Many of those writings have been found in the 20th century. In this view, the original selections, selection served purposes, social, political, theological, that should not be regarded as binding for all time. Okay, he goes on to say here, just bear with me, you know, I'm coming out, tiger with me. In the Syriac speaking culture of the upper Mesopotamia and Syria, the apostle was called Judas Thomas, interesting. Thomas Tama means twin in Syriac and form of and a form, pardon me, a form of the Aram Aramic Aramic, which was the language that Jesus and his followers spoke, according to this. And Didymus, a name by which the apostle is also called in the Gospel of John, means twin. In Greek, okay. Perhaps some regarded the two as blood brothers, the two of whom, or the Jesus and um, the Thomas. Okay, yeah, but that's impossible. I mean, I mean, well, just impossible, isn't it? You know, Christ's virgin birth and Mary, Joseph. That there's no way you can't fit that in. A twin, you said, you know. Okay, let's just continue to read. Perhaps the twinship was regarded as as spiritual or symbolic. Perhaps. Sometimes, as the Christian Gnostics uh, 
systems, famous seems to be the, the, this worldly reflection or image of a divine savior figure, an earthly body inhabited by a, a spirit-like savior. Okay. In any event, Thomas became a focus of special reverence. Okay, and it can go, it goes on and on and on. Now, as far as the scripture of Thomas and the book of Thomas, and uh, I'm sure some of you have already, you know, at least gone online and have taken a look at it. And it has been mentioned in other writings, you know, you know, the book, the Holy Blood, the Holy Grail. Take some time to highlight that whole science of Didymus and the Thomas and these different things. So for those who have ever read that book, um, you would have a, at least a good understanding of that level of it. So what we're getting from all that we read here now is that Thomas is, you know, given in a light, much more a brighter light than what we are usually given of him or what we think of him. You know, first of all, he's the doubter. You know, he's like disciple number 11, I guess, because Judas may be number 12. And how interesting it is that he, interestingly, is also named Judas. Now, Judas is just the Greek term of saying Judah, you know. When it says that Judah, uh, Judas betrayed Christ, in reality, even in Kadamawa Haile Selassie, you know, Judah, the people of Judah, you know, man, the own people, you know, man, betrayed the Christ for true. So Judas is really Judah in, in the Greek, and that's how the New Testament, so even the Judas, is Judah his name is, you know, as the tribe of Judah, that name, you know. So Judah, Thomas, or Tama, according to what they're saying in the Syriac, they coming from the, um, the, the, uh, the Ar Aramaic, and uh, it says a form of the Aramaic. Um, well, linguistically, I think the Aramaic would have supposedly come out of the Syriac. But then even the Syriac itself, I think they have different types of it too. But from my knowledge, that's how it is. I could be, you know, I stand to be corrected if I'm not correct there. But that is what I think. But anyway. The point is there now, so you understand there, so we have that character there, and he is seen, you know, as a very prominent character at a specific time in a specific part of the world. The Thomas character, he's seen as an individual that is like one of the chief disciples, something like a Peter, and something like a Paul. You know, Peter, you're the rock that I leave this upon, but I mean, we ain't got no evidence of none of this. What are you trying to do? Give Thomas a position that he doesn't really have they know they no proof in the bible brother say nothing about no thomas you and your twin business that's why the popes took that book out of the bible we don't believe in <laughs> book of no thomas some people say thomas didn't write the book so weird so matthew wrote the book no don't be playing with me so what are you trying to tell me luke wrote i mean that's really uh, was it a Mark wrote that book when according to listen according to science you know according to discoveries let's say theological science according to theological science the science that deals with the discovery of these theological materials and and um, uh, those who do the chronology I guess there's space for error but they will tell you that the book of Matthew specifically was written at least 50 years after the death of Matthew. You know, and I think most scholars by now and even, you know, those who are theological leaders and, and you know, with an understanding, even if they're, they're religious, will tell you that a lot of the books that are attributed to individuals were not really written by the individual, but it's, it's almost like a biography where you have autobiographies and then you have a biography, you know, and, and people run around it all day long. But I always say, so who wrote Second Samuel? You know, who wrote Second Samuel? Samuel died in First Samuel. It says so, and Samuel died. Oh, read it for yourself. And yet still you got a Second Samuel speaking about 
decades after Samuel died. So who wrote Second Samuel? You know, I mean, we have done a whole lecture on that, you know. You know, and we, we highlighted many different aspects. I don't want to dig that out right now. But at least it's something for you to think of, even if you've never heard that conversation that we had. Who wrote Second Samuel? You know, so if you are on the terrestrial level, it only makes sense that there was someone, you know, after Samuel who wrote at least his memoirs or, 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 or put down some level of understanding, you know, in his name. Because Samuel was dead. The, the point is Samuel was dead in First Samuel. Samuel was dead in First Samuel. Then comes a second Samuel. That is years upon years after Samuel done gone. And it's in his name. It's in his name. And it's not even like Matthew, a story of the past. It's an ongoing story written in the name of Samuel. <laughs> which is the next level altogether. Which proves the high level of allegory there. But that's another program for another time, which we have touched already. But that could just, that's the next program. Believe me, that's a program by itself. You know, so I'm just saying all of that to say the argument that Thomas didn't write Thomas. I mean, okay, I, I ain't going to jump in the ring and try to battle that with no one. But who wrote Matthew? Even Luke, although some it's some literally say they only give the the Gospel of Luke to Luke as a credible book written by the author that say that they, they you know he's the one that wrote it. So anyway, please don't get dogmatic with your brother here. I'm just drawing a picture of reality because I'm homing in on a point. I want to talk about Thomas. Now, Thomas for, for, for a specific group, those in the front of the class, you know, there's a level to all of this. Thomas is referred to as the twin. Thomas is referred to as the twin of Christ. Now, if you are like the Gnostics, into the esoterics you cannot overlook that because didymus and and thomas didymus everything there means twin two twins twice and his name is judas now you have the gospel of judas too all of these disciples had their writings And in these other Gospels, it speaks of even when Christ was crucified. Some Gospels literally say that it wasn't him that was crucified. It was the same Judas that took his place. So what are you trying to tell me? Judas look like him too? Well, I mean, the Gospels that they took out carry some mystic vibes. So... The Christ wasn't crucified, it was somebody in his place. And Bobo Shanti, we have that philosophy too. Some will be quick to say no, but maybe you don't know. And I noticed that because that's a part of the story I see we leave out when it's the resurrection time. We talk about the resurrection, we talk about the, the, the black Christ crucifixion and all of these different things. But I've learned, I've been cultured and I, it comes up every now and again that the Christ himself say when they were beating and manhandling him it wasn't really him <laughs> he was the christ was in a distance looking on i'm sure you've received that um, that allegory from the black christ if you were amongst him and even if you were not and you are a part of the steppings you would have heard that at least sometime is usually left out of the narrative but not because it's not brought up it doesn't mean that the story is still not valid and we still get that in some of the the gnostic gospels some of them say that the christ even in his crucifixion it wasn't him but the place was taken by another one a judas which judas because it's interesting that thomas name is judas too judas didymus thomas but, uh, I mean, where you carry this? No, no, listen. Let me tell you where I carry this. Man. Even Christ referred 
to Thomas as his twin in the same gospel of Thomas. There was a time that they even saw Christ and mistook him for Thomas and the same vice versa. It happens all the time. Even in some of the ancient artworks, even Michelangelo and his drawings, when you see them draw the, the, the Jesus and the 12 disciples, they usually have a disciple in the midst that look just like the Jesus. Even in some of the Ethiopian drawings, it's not, you know, when new people begin to draw these things, they may not get the flavor of the esoteric of the allegory. But in the ancient time, you will always see the ancient Christ and the 12 disciples where you would see one of them very similar. In the Ethiopian art, you usually see the, the Christ much taller than the rest. But there's always one not as tall as him, but has the exact same facial features as him. They always make room for that. That's the Thomas. So they understood the allegory. Even the, the, the Europeans understood the allegory. That's why they could, you know, be so meticulous in switching up the allegory, you know, to become phallogory and, and <laughs> all kind of foolish glory now we're getting now, you know, and, and, and over literal and so many different things. That's the point that I'm making. So I'm just showing you that when we comprehend this now, so the science of the twin you know it's all over the the, the the theological world the creation of the earth in the main calendar with Kulku Khan uh, not Kulku Khan well it's Kulku Khan but in another form the, the Quetzalcoatl and um, um, Despotic Despot, uh, Despot Idiot what's the name of the main God the Honorable Prince I'm talking about with uh, um, Quetzalcoatl Quetzal and Descapipoca. They're twins, and they 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 still resemble the same Huanapu one and Huanapu seven in the the same creational story that brought forth the the, the another twins, which is the hero twins, which is um, Huanapu and Shai Belanke, which they call Jaguar Deer and. Um, Jago there and the other one I can't remember that one didn't I myself. That uh, Jago there and um, <laughs> okay, well you get it sometime. Yeah, but whatever the case is, the science of the twin is all over. If you remember, you could tell me the science of the twin is all over. You know, Jacob and Esau. You know, Adam and Eve. You know, because when we do, when we bring out, and that's coming out very soon, the Aquarius from Pisces to Aquarius. From Pisces to Aquarius specifically, which is the the whole aspect of the heavens declare the glory. We're going to be showing you a mystic about Gemini as well, uh, and uh, how it relates to Adam and Eve. Gemini, we'll be showing you, man, and exactly how it relates to Adam and Eve. So that will be very interesting for you to see. So I'm just showing you that's the twins, the twin signs there again. You also uh, you also have the signs of the. The, the twins in in many different aspects the Osiris and the Set and all of these different things so the brothers you know that 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 ancient science so when Christ now is said to have a twin especially if you're dealing with this again reading between the lines <laughs> my brothers and sisters when Christ arose they have gospels that say when they wanted to touch him, Christ told them, touch me not. Why? Touch me not. Why? Touch me not. Why? Because I have not yet ascended unto my father. Now don't get me wrong. They have some other gospel that says the, 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 the sisters them held him by his ankles, you know. And he told them, fear not, you know, and that's, that's some of the contradictions you'll find in the Bible if you're going to be over literal with the, the science. But if you understand, I'll repeat it again. The allegory, man, we're sailing on some smooth waters here. So I'm saying that he told them not to touch here. You see, but don't touch. He's not a man to be touched right now. 
Thomas touched him. Doubting Thomas. The one that didn't believe. He touched him. He not only touched him. He poked his fingers in his wounds. The same wounds that spilt the blood to save mankind. Thomas had the opportunity. I don't know how you're looking at it. To put his fingers in these wounds. Hear me, the man. Hear me. The disciples were in the room and the vast majority of them were already doubted. And then the Messiah came in and they were terrified. They couldn't believe. It is him. And he showed them the wounds. They didn't really have to touch. They see the man. They know the man, man. No touching necessary. It's not as if Thomas had to touch him. He just invited him to touch. Because he was doubting all along. But they were doubting all along too. Before he came. And when he came, they saw him. And <gasps> when he said what he had to say, and he moved out. And they looked upon themselves and said, Can you believe this? I must be dreaming. Wow, no one will believe us. They don't know the outcome. Nobody could believe this. And then came Thomas. And he had some reservations as well. So what's wrong with that? The rest of them were doubting too. <laughs> yeah. If he, was, if he, Thomas, was there with them, I'm sure he would have believed too. He wouldn't have to touch. If any one of them that was there wasn't there, they would be doubting just as much as Thomas if they came in the door with him. Hmm. Let's just say who, the Mark, let's say Mark wasn't there. Mark and Thomas went to the shop. And when they came back, they said, Mark, Thomas Christ was here. Thomas said, who? Here we are. Right here, Mark said, come on, what's wrong with you brothers? Come on, Thomas, let's get out of here. These, these brothers are crap. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. So there's no great difference when you understand. Let's, we never, you see, we've never been taught to look at this realistically, you know. Even in that sense, whether you feel the Bible is real or not, you know. Let's just take it how it's written. We've never been taught to just look at it on a realistic level. That he wasn't there when the man made his grand entrance. And his glory was such that nobody could really doubt. Can you, you just imagine you don't have to believe in it, but just imagine. Imagine you in the room, brother, you and the rest of them. And the big man just walk in the room. Man that was dead. Just walk in the door and say, my brothers, it is I. I don't know how you'd feel. You know, you, you see the, the, the thing, the, the, the rope, the neck, the, um, what you call it, the mark from the, the hangman noose around his neck. You see the holes in his hand. You see the hole in his feet and the side and all of that. Huh? And he's showing that to you and the glowing light and you just there. Oh, you would you really feel? <laughs> you know, and then he move out and the wind blowing. Shh, you done know the whole magic. Yeah. You'd catch a fit. You wouldn't sleep that night. You understand? So you have reason to believe. Thomas ain't got no reason to believe nothing. He didn't see nothing. He, he don't know what you're talking about. So now... That brings us to the climax of the story. To the point now that his doubting is going so strong that the Messiah returns now. And when he saw him, he believed. Now we say, boy, read good and trust me, man. We call him to come, come and touch him. And he went and he touched the wounds. He touched the wounds of his twin. He touched the wounds of the Messiah, the saving wounds. Something about touching the hem of his garments. The hymn says, No longer Thomas then deny. 
He saw his hand, his, his feet, his side. Thou art my Lord and God, he cried, Hallelujah! What a savior! The allegory, brother, is being played out. Thomas ain't no doubt I like how we have the Thomas thing. This is a high vibration being expressed here. Yeah, yeah, I know, I mean, I know, I know, I know you're going to say, boy, yeah, but no. So this is why now Thomas had a very prominent role. Remember they rip his book out, you know. What they say? Ah, oh, we don't want to hear from him. He didn't believe. That's ain't what they say. There's something in the book they don't want you to read. Who else talking about the twin of Christ? What's this twin thing all about? Elijah had an Elisha. I never really hear them be referred to as twin, but just the name, the fact that the names are so close. There's something being expressed there. Because for those who even studied with us when we did, um, did pardon me, the science of the cartoons, you know there's a science behind the twin. That even the sorcerers and the, the warlocks and the witches in the entertainment industry and the production and film use and express it in their movies and in the theater and in their cartoons. The science of the twins. Snow White and, and Red Rose. I hope you remember all of that, man. And, who, who, and Snow White is not the Snow White. In Snow White is Red Rose. Red Rose is the Snow White when you watch Snow White. Huh? You need you haven't seen it's on YouTube. Go and watch the, the series that we did entitled the the secret messages in cartoon or oh, something like that. What was the thing name again? But something, whatever it is, you can find it, man. And we break that down for you tremendously, make you understand that you know properly. You know, and that'll bring us back here. The twin, the Didymus. So this prominent, and he's a, um, one of the fathers of the whole monastery vibration of, of, of communal living. In brotherhood, that is the same Thomas again. Did him us. Yeah. So, some may find it blaspheming. But I find it quite interesting that this Christ figure has a twin. A look-alike. Um, what does look alike really mean? It may not mean they look just like the twin. I mean, there's a lot of science here. Okay, for example, we take Haile Selassie as the Christ. A lot of ones, I should say we. A lot of people consider Haile Selassie being the return Messiah, the, re the return Christ. And if you are even one bit, you know, understanding of the mythos, and the allegory and the, 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 the science, of course, of the secret message, you would see that nothing new is under the sun and everything is played out again and again and again. As Marcus Messiah Gabi is the Elijah, there is an Elisha that came right after him that was alive, literally, who was born when Marcus Messiah Gabi was with us. So it's not reincarnation, just like Elijah and Elisha's relationship. You know, so so we put it and see that the Elisha, which some of the books they ripped out of the Bible, clearly show Elisha was a general and a warlord. Elisha, the same Dada Idi I mean we speak of. We've done you know documentaries on that. So so just speaking of that and the Night of the Black Tiger is coming out for the seventeenth of August. But just speaking about that, when you can you know see see all of this and see the the science being replayed over the ages. So the Christ now. The same Christ yesterday is the same Christ today. So, if the science is still intact, Christ should have a twin, shouldn't he? I'm just saying, I mean, no ruffle your feathers. Oh, it's all right. No ruffle your feathers. <laughs> the bird's singing when I say don't ruffle, don't ruffle your feathers. I'm just saying, if Haile Selassie represents Christ to many of us, we say he's the return Christ. You know, we say that he is the Jesus Christ. The second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, that's, that's, you know, the standing statement of many of us. So if that is so, I'm just saying, if we follow the allegorical script, because we, we put everybody in place, you know, and, we, and some, some people say, Mary Magdalene is Empress Menin, and we follow the whole thing and say, you know, the crucifixion is, 
when this happened and when that happened and and, and when you turn what into wine is when this happened and that happened that, that's how we do the thing you know and and try to show everything that's going on in the band happening in the, in the in the life of Haile Selassie the first and say you know in his presence amongst us and say well yeah look at here we played in the bible and i can agree with a lot of these alignments of course i myself have made some of these alignments fair enough so is there any alignment with the christ having a twin you know as someone referred to as a, a twin somebody who was worthy to dig his finger in the five bleeding wounds where nobody else could all the disciples standing up there they say he doubted, you know, because that's what they say about Thomas. He's a doubter, you know. They say he's not following the right order. I mean, um, I wonder if I'm going too far ahead here for you. They say that, well, look, he he, he doing the thing wrong. That's not how the thing's supposed to do. He, he You know, he doubting then, basically. He, I don't know, he turned the flag upside down, whatever the case is. But he doubted. What kind of star is that? He doubted, man. He, he, he doubt, he's still keeping up Sabbath and all that kind of thing. He doubt he doubt it, man. He 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 don't really believe, you know. He think he's the thing. Is he here we call himself? He, yeah, he think like he's the man. Like when he look in the mirror, is the man he see. But then now, but no, I'm just trying to balance it out here. So is there a place? I'm not playing around. <laughs> is there is there is there a seat there for this this science within the old now come new of a Thomas? A did he must then you know the doubting one that put his hands in the wounds of the Christ they rip his book right out brother they mean that we don't we're not supposed to read nothing about this one here and as I said it may not necessarily be a mirror image and you know just to show you this is not a joke you know. um, I'm gonna do a whole program on this but the Tutankhamun science. You have heard the documentary we did on Tutankhamun just a few days ago. The the episode, I should say, a few days ago, and I'm sure you've taken it in. Most of you have seen the documentary Seven, the Divinity of King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, and you you clearly understand how I think of Tutankhamun. I see him just as he is, the feathered snake, more than all the kings of Kemet. I don't care who they bring up and who they think we those of us who just that we don't just read history we read the science and the science shows us that he is the feathered snake he is the science of the sun the cycle of the sun the 11 year sunspot cycle in flesh the 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 cuts a quartel that you know of all ages you know that's the tut uh tut ank aman you know akhenaten moved the cat capital to to literally give birth to a man and I've explained that in the documentary we did, um, which is on YouTube directly dealing with King Seti um, disrespecting Akhenaten and Tutankhamun by leaving them out of the, the list of kings, the 76, and we showed you it's no disrespect whatsoever to any of um, um, either Tutankhamun or no disrespect to Akhenaten whatsoever. It is actually a, a, a respect because of who they are exactly the science that they carry you know these two gods amongst them Akhenaten and Tutankhamun more than any of the rest even the warriors that came after they're very powerful but them two men stand out you know a holy um a holy team you know one like the forerunner who went before to move the capital to give birth to Tutankhamun that's what it is the living image of a man the cycle of the the feathered snake and if we believe so much in our ancient people obviously it was a it was a unanimous decision here you know for the young boy king to be wearing the feather and the snake the, the bird and the snake throughout the ages of all the committed kings that didn't carry that signal and that signal represents Ra himself or the Aten himself or the Amon himself walking on the planet earth that's the whole science so that is why up to this day you don't see nothing like the tomb of Tutankhamun, you know and even as i said the sort of curses that came down i mean wow it is undeniable for those who heard that documentary or, or that episode that we did at Tutankhamun. it is undeniable that Tutankhamun ain't nobody to play around with even when he's dead undeniable too many things happened and the sequence was too clear 
for anybody i don't care what religion you are you could be islam christian rasta you cannot get up and say well no no nah, man that that's just coincidence you crazy you didn't listen it go and listen to the program again man come on just coincidence no nah, man that's real ancient science coming down howard carter what the man there lord carnivan the mosquito bite and his wife insect bite and his brother blood poison and just like he of blood poison and the other fella that came in there that died the next day and just the list goes on and the light coming out when he die and his dog die the same time he die and the, the minute they start to pick out the tomb a snake eat his bird what's wrong that's tooth on command the feathered snake and on his footstool we don't even have to go that far right now that's the next realms but that's him the same Lahal Pakal, the Olmec from that time, the same Guatama Buddha, it is him. I've said this on another documentary, but I haven't really gone into the depths one of these days. I think I'm even saving this for a video lecture. You know they found Tutankhamun, right? With a mask on his head. You know that, the famous mask. And you know that Tutankhamun was buried in three caskets now i'm just going to make it short and i, I showed you in that same documentary we did dealing with um um seti and and akhenaton and tutankhamun i showed you the book in that very same casket there are three faces tutankhamun is buried in three caskets and the three of them are ordained, are adorned, pardon me. Well, they're ordained too, but they're adorned in Tutankhamun's clothes. You listen to me good. So they have on Tutankhamun's clothes. But the middle casket is not Tutankhamun. And even if you disagree on who it is, I know for sure no right thinking individual could look at that and say that's the same man in casket number one and the same I mean same face on casket number one and the face on casket number three and the face of the mask because four faces in it, and three of them look the same and one of them look odd and it's the face of Semenkari yeah he who's often forgotten and raised up to the standard of Ra. That's what the name means to be, you know, brought up to the standard of Ra. And his tomb, the Semenkari tomb, was found 13 meters away from Tutankhamun's tomb. It's so mystic, you could just walk out of. Uh, is it 13? 13. Yes, I think I'm correct. You could just walk out of his tomb. That's Tutankhamun's tomb. And just walk straight and you walk straight down into Semenkare's little tomb there mystically and this tomb was basically empty the to the the complete opposite of Tutankhamun's tomb and then you know these Egyptologists come up with all kind of weird theory and who rob whose tomb to make their tomb and come on don't worry them these people here don't get caught up with their theology. They totally miss what's going on. They think everybody think like them. You don't see the pyramids we build. We, you think you can think like them and build that? No. Nah. But not us anyway. Maybe they could do something however they think. But I'm just showing you that the second casket was Semenkare. And for whatever reason, Remember who Tutankhamun is? No, so Semenkare had on the feathered snake too. Remember who Tutankhamun is? Listen to me. Remember who Tutankhamun is? This is undeniable. The feathered snake. The boy king came to the throne at the age of nine. Just like Lord Pakal, the other feathered snake in the main kingdom came to the throne at the age of nine. Mm -hmm. The same Tutankhamun 
19.7 years imagine that that's what they rounded off to 7200 days the same 72 and the cycle of the sun the 72 which go on and on you don't know how the 72 go psalm 72 and 72 leaders in the, the living mythos came before the king of kings negus and negus the whole 72 cycle one degree of the sun every 72 years the blood 72 times a minute and the 72 the cycle the reality of it hmm? he lived for 7200 days 19.7 years according to them Hmm. <laughs> and remember his wet nurse is Maya and the, the one that built that illustrious tomb is Maya Lord Pakal who is the other feathered snake the king of the Mayans the Buddha's mother is Maya and the Buddha is seen in the mask of Lord Pakal where there is the image of Tutankhamun alongside the same Lord Pakal you've seen seven man so we all know who Tutankhamun is so who is the Menkari? How he gets such a prestigious position? Come on, come on. Who is Samenkare that he can get such a prestigious position? We so not even looking for that, that we looking on Samenkare and think it's Tutankhamun all the time. But when we say, well, wait, 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 this don't look like him. Who don't look like who? Look at the middle casket, the, the casket outside, the one that you see first, you know, that is the king, Tutankhamun. But then when you open that, that ain't him. That's his clothes. But that's not him. But that's his clothes. And I'm going to keep that clothes point. That's his clothes. That's his clothes. This cementary has on the clothes of Tutankhamun. I'm going to say this good enough. Even if you think Tutankhamun is not wearing his clothes, cementary has on his clothes. So when you see cementary in his clothes, that is the clothes. Of Tutankhamun. It's Prince Emmanuel I'm talking about. Him. I know I'm the time to be going around the bush. It's Prince Emmanuel I'm talking about. Because I'm sure. I am sure. I don't want to get, I kind of get a little passionate here. You know? Sometimes I try to calm myself down, you know, but it's all in love. Eh? But just check my good. I check my good. I'm in my lane. Eh? I am in my lane. When it comes to linking highly Selassie with Tutankhamun, it's undeniable. So just no feeling of it. It is undeniable. All right, straight up. Okay. Even linking Jesus Christ with Haile Selassie is undeniable. All right. And Jesus Christ has a twin, a Thomas, the, the doubted one, somebody that nobody really check it for. He didn't believe the Thomas, but yet still the Thomas had the opportunity. To touch the wounds of the, the, the he that was dead dead you know dead when we opened the necropolis the the the, the 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 city of the dead and we come inside and we see the casket dead we talking about of who took anchor man when we open it the first person we see is thomas uh uh um Semenkare. Who's, when, just to go into his tomb alone shows you what they thought of him. Well, so it seems because he ain't got nothing in his tomb. You know, just empty and you know, a little thing here on the ground, one or two strips of gold, but nothing to talk about at all. The wall was damp and dreary, nothing in comparison to Tutankhamun's tomb. Total opposite. But yet still, he was found worthy. I didn't see Akhenaten's face there. No disrespect to my lord Akhenaten. Oh, come on. I'm just showing your thing. We didn't see no Ramesses face there. We didn't see none of them people there. Who Khufu, nobody face was there. It was Semenkare, somebody we don't even talk about. His face was there. In Tutankhamun's place. It's the same science. Christ and his twin. It's the same science. Somebody that wears Tutankhamun's clothes. That's the, that's the vibes in him. He wears, it's not his own clothes he have on. You think he's doing his own thing. You think he's doing his own thing. You gotta see the king again? Oh, we're gonna see how you see again. How you think the king gonna look if you see him again? You think his necktie and military suits? Since we're talking about clothes. <laughs> 
you know, brother, the, the king in Avacino is, is the judgment that he hit the earth. Okay, well, you talking about something else then. I talking to those who say they're going to see the king. They have a set of people, you know, that say they're going to see the king walking out, riding a lion and all kind of thing, and chariots in the sky. They're going to see the emperor. So if you see him how, even if he have a big old crown, I mean, it's the whole, the old, the old lion you're going to see in a man. You don't expect natty dreadlocks, bongo dreadlocks. Emmanuel order you will see, man. Any which way you turn it. Because Semenkari has on to anchor man's clothes. So I'm just showing you that that's a living allegory. So to anchor man is here again, the first place the king visit when he go to slew the um well yes yeah, slew the league of nation let the let the games begin in 1920 and 324 and you know that's not the, the the day of the final slew you know in the 1930s but that's when he went to um put ethiopia into the league of nations so he was in a position now to land the right hook you know you could say there specifically and he went into tutankhamun's too you know just 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 months after these killers discovered it everything is right on time as i said in the documentary i did no mosquito bite the emperor you understand because that's the living tooth and command going in there so i'm just showing you now you have to explain who's the menkere yeah. and who's the famous now the didymus the twin mm -hmm. and then you know as bobo shanti you now Muff Boba Shanti will tell you that Haile Selassie is not Christ, it's God Almighty. I tell you, know, um, I wouldn't say it's not Christ, but the God Almighty part, I can work with that too. You know, especially for conversation's sake and that level to use such terms. But I know you're talking about. Yeah, so they say Manuel is the Christ. Okay. All right. So if, he, if Prince Emmanuel is the Christ now, so who is his twin? <laughs> Holy Manuel, I Celestia, I Ja, Rastafari. I do give thanks, you know, for your presence. This has been a wonderful one. It's glad to see Radio Anu in the full effect. You know, we have a lot of mighty works to fulfill. Remember, you know, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. You know, you know, definitely contact us. Email priest Isaac27 at gmail.com. You can definitely call our WhatsApp also 12687283162. Of course, just look, give me a few moments and you definitely will be getting um, as I said, our second video lecture for for our series of video lectures that we will be doing. And the second one definitely from Pisces to, to the Aquarius 8. It will be definitely very interesting and something for you to, you know, sit in and see several times over and over again, of course. And remember, Anu the Ancient and Modern is definitely available for you. Ebook fashion, the Biblical Land of Israel also. Just doing the last touches on the editing day for that, the Biblical Land of Israel. And of course, the true Biblical Land of Israel. And as you know, we have already launched our first in children books. I'm talking about our, our uh, Tiger Cubs productions. You know, definitely geared for the children, definitely geared for the young ones, you know. So you could definitely contact us to get these. These are extremely cheap. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I prefer you contact me so we speak about these books specifically. Uh, but of course, you know, the Biblical Land of Israel and of course the Anu, they're $20 each. The e-books, the children books are way, way past that, you know, I'm telling you, way down the line. You know, these are for the children um, and it is to encourage, you know, it is to encourage our society now to, to get into the whole aspect of, of edifying our children. Don't depend on the school alone, but put something there especially since they're using the computers as well so we're trying to get all sorts of different ways and means to edify them and it would be of very little expense to you the parents that's why we're not even talking about price here on the air we just prefer if you're serious you contact us that's all i'm saying so do give thanks to the life giver and the keep of life if you know your bible in this see this is a this is a real case for this phrase if you know your bible bro and you do not know your history sister your knowledge of your bible will definitely become a mystery yes i mean up man thomas in the house man 
It takes some real eyes to realize the real lies that is amongst us. Get us in my eyes, last year. Ja, Rastafari. Bless the house of King David, Ethiopia. <laughs>